Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com and today I wanted to answer your question of what's the difference between a freelancer versus a consultant? So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so this question I've been getting a lot because I talk about it almost interchangeably and I say freelancer, software consultant, or software freelancer. So I want to answer this question for you guys. Whether you're a programmer or in any field, this is uh, pretty similar. Okay, so this is not gonna be so programming specific because I think it applies to pretty much any field and you can take it away right after watching this video. So a freelancer is somebody who doesn't really work for one company as an employee a full-time employee they can generally choose their own hours choose to work with their own clients and a consultant is you know pretty similar in that case they choose to work on their own time they pick their own clients but here is one key difference that I think is there between a freelancer and a consultant so freelancer you know you're just trying to get as many people to work with you as possible trying to accept as many jobs as possible whereas for as a software consultant you're not thinking of these people as your customers you're thinking of them as your clients so the difference between customers and clients is that a customer is somebody who buys from you Whereas a client, by definition, is somebody who is under your protection. And this is something I got from Jay Abraham, and it's helped me make that connection. So as a consultant, you're thinking of them as your clients, not just like somebody who's giving you a temporary job or just like you're trying to make a few extra cash or make fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 extra this month. As a consultant, you're choosing to work with this person because you respect them uh, or this business. And you want to basically safeguard them and protect them from anything, even if they're not thinking about it. So now let's make these examples just a little bit more tangible. So as a freelancer, maybe um, you get a job, right? As a, as a web developer, you can go on Upwork.com and try to apply for a job there. And let's say that they give you some Python job to do, which is, okay, make this simple web app for us so people can check out and buy things, okay? As a freelancer, you're going to literally follow every single thing that's given to you, but do nothing more outside of it. So everything that's in the requirements, like make a checkout page, make this, make that, and then that's it. Whereas as a consultant, even though you're a Python web development consultant, you'll be like, okay, wait a minute. I get that you're trying to sell something. But before I start to work on it, do you have an audience? And if these people are like, no, I don't have an audience, well, you should be like, okay, if you don't have an audience, who are you gonna who are you gonna sell this to? It doesn't matter if you have the greatest product in the world or the greatest service in the world. If you don't have an audience so, or somebody there who's ready to buy, what's the point of investing all this effort, hiring me as a Python developer for you, you know, charging you X amount of dollars or to make something for you when at the end of the day there's nobody that you can sell it to and at this point they might go okay this guy's thinking too much I just wanted to hire somebody who's like a dumb brute and just does things and they might fire you in that case that's not the type of person you wanted to work with anyways because you want them to respect you and actually give you um, you know a thoughtful answer and not just fire anybody that you know they don't like or they don't like a question from them you should be in a habit of challenging people and challenging pre you know uh, these these assumptions on the other hand instead of firing you they might be like holy crap this guy doesn't just do this guy or curl doesn't just do the bare minimum amount of work that we give him this person does everything and then beyond and still is able to think so he's not just following directions he's somebody who get, who's actually autonomous and can think for himself so that level of autonomy is what most people need or most businesses need that type of um, you know just being able to think by yourself 
Whereas, and that can make the difference between a lot of the times people are like, how do you become a hundred dollar an hour freelancer? Um, and I have a video on that. And I think that something that's misleading maybe in that video is that it should really be a hundred dollar an hour consultant because it's hard to pay a freelancer that much money because you're just a commodity. You think like everybody else, you're just offering the same service that everybody else is offering. There's nothing more that you bring to the table. But as a consultant, you bring your brain with you and you bring some other skills and care and love for what you're doing other than, oh, let me just get this job done. Because the person who's working with you is thinking, this person doesn't even care about his own job. He's trying to do what's best for me. So somebody who you're trying to do the best for and they feel that, do you think they're going to try to jip you and pay you less money? Or will they be thinking, okay, I can trust this person 100%. Now the question is just whether I just want to pay them or not. And most likely they're going to be like, okay, I want to pay this person the price that he or she's asking because it takes out the thinking for me to deliver quality work. And if something's not right, they'll also watch my back and tell me, even if it hurts them, right? So as a consultant, that's one of the biggest things. Even if it hurts you, you have to make the decision that's best for your client because they are under your protection. That's your difference between a freelancer and consultant. That's why I always talk about software consultants. The reason why I'll use a term like freelancer is because most people don't understand consultant and they do understand freelancers. So consultant is similar, except that you really care and put your neck out there for your clients. That's when you can charge $100, $150, $200, $250 an hour, or sometimes even thousands of dollars an hour. But if you're just starting out, focus on first getting to that $100 an hour. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I love your faces off, and I'll see you in the next video.